So looking at the limits for the trigonometric function, if you go to the book on 3.5, they go over two specific limits. And if we can get sine of x over x as the limit as x to go to infinity by the squeeze theorem, this is proven to be 1. And then by a similar proof, we can prove that if we get something in the form cosine of x minus 1 over x, as the limit as x goes to 0, goes to 0. So we can use these two limits to evaluate the limits of a trigonometric function. In this section, they also talk about the derivative. Um, you can just memorize these, or you can derive them. But here, keep in mind that this is also the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of something over that same something will go to 1. So this might be 5x. Well, then I can manipulate it to be 5x on the bottom by multiplying top and bottom by 5x if needed. But as long as I have the sine of something divided by that same something as the limit as x goes to 0 is 1. And the same thing here with the second one. So here we're looking for a function to be continuous. And for a function to be continuous, right, I'm going to set the limit on the right equal to the limit on the left equal to the value of the function at the point. So here, what is the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine of x over 4x? Well, I could write that as I could pull out a fourth, right, 1 fourth, and I could write that as the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine of x over x. And that is the similar here if I pulled out a negative one-fourth I guess it would be the exact same and that would be cosine of x minus one which is this exact same thing here so I know that this goes to zero so if this whole thing goes to zero then minus one-fourth of it goes to zero so you said a equal to that here Really what you're doing is you're manipulating this limit, the limit as x goes to 0. If I write this sine of 5x, I can manipulate it by saying I'm going to multiply the top by 5x and the bottom by 5x. That doesn't change that. And then we have sine of 3x, and I can manipulate the denominator by multiplying 3x in the denominator and dividing 3x in the denominator. And by doing that, that is setting this up for the sine of 5x over 5x is going to go to 1. As the limit as x goes to 0, this goes to 1. The same thing here, the sine of 3x divided by 3x. I manipulated that so it worked out to go to 1 as well. So really I'm dealing with the limit as x goes to 0 of 5x over 3x. And of course the x's are going to cancel and I'm going to be the limit as x goes to 0 of 5 thirds equals 5 thirds. By applying the theorem here for this limit, manipulating it in a way to, for it easily to cancel without changing the limit. So I can, I can always multiply any term by 1. And 5x over 5x is 1, I just rearrange it so it's convenient. This next one here, I'm going to do a very similar thing. Um, the limit as x goes to 0. Here I would have 0 over 0. But I'm going to rewrite tangent as sine over cosine. So here I'd have sine of 15x divided by sine of x over cosine of x. And I might clean it up one step. Um, the limit as x goes to 0. Here I'd have sine of 15x, but then this 1 over cosine, I'm going to flip and multiply it. So really that brings cosine to the numerator. So if I manipulate here, I would divide by 15x. I'm going to have to multiply by 15x. Here I'm going to divide by x, so I'm going to have to multiply by x. 
So I know this term goes to one and I know this term goes to one. So what am I left with? I have the limit as x goes to zero, 15x divided by 15 times cosine of x. Cosine of zero is one. So I really get the limit as x goes to zero of 15, because that cancels cosine of x. So I get 15 cosine of zero, so I get 15. So hopefully you see here, manipulate tangent is sine over cosine. When I divide fractions, I'm really flipping and multiplying, so the cosine goes in the numerator. Simplifying my sine of 15x over 15x, and my sine of x over x goes to 1, and so forth. So here's where we're, we're, we're really looking at these equations again. And here, this is a difference of squared. It's the same thing as like if I have x squared minus 1, I can write that as x minus 1 x plus 1. So I can write this as the limit as theta goes to 0 of cosine of theta minus 1 divided by cosine of theta plus 1 over theta. Right? So here I know that cosine, I know this right here is going to go to zero. I could, so if I have a times b over c, I can write that as a over c times b. And that's what we're doing here. We're taking the limit as theta goes to zero of cosine of theta minus one over theta times the limit as theta goes to zero of cosine of theta plus one. Cosine of theta plus 1, this limit here actually goes to 2, because cosine of 0 is 1, so we end up with 1 plus 1, which is 2. However, this limit goes to 0. 0 times 2 is 0. So that's what we get there. Very similar to this one, we get the limit as x goes to 3 of sine of x minus 3 over x squared minus 9. This is a difference of squared. I can write that as x minus 3, x plus 3. And really this is the same principle, it's just being shifted. So x isn't going to 0, but sine of x minus 3 and divided by x minus 3, those terms are going to 0. So then I can then multiply that by 1 over x plus 3. So this whole term is going to 1. So if x is going to 3, really I'm getting the limit as x goes to 3 of 1 over x plus 3, which would be 1 over 6. Let me get right here. Here, um, same thing with tangent. I write tangent as sine over cosine, sine of 5x over cosine of 5x. I left x in the denominator here. Then I manipulated this sine of 5x, write 5 sine of 5x, and then I use this x here. So if you would have used 5x times 5x, it would have ended up simplifying the same. So this whole term then here is set up to go to 1 which is what this is saying here. I'm left with a 5 in the numerator and a cosine of 5x in the denominator. Cosine evaluated at 0 is 1, and 5 evaluated at 0 is just 1. This is this one here. So my answer here is 5. Turns out anytime you have the tangent of 5x over x as x goes to 0, it's going to be, um, if I do the limit as x goes to 0 of tangent of alpha x over x, that's just going to be alpha. By using this technique, you'll always get alpha. Hopefully this kind of clears up what you're doing here. Um, on the final exam, there's not a lot of this because later on we learn L'Hopital's rule. And in chapter 4, I believe, we will use 
use L'Hopital's rule. For, um, and it turns out this theorem allows us for an easier application of problems in chapter 3 where it doesn't matter if we have 0 over 0 we don't have to do anything crazy we can apply L'Hopital's rule so you'll get on the final exam as far as applying these they really don't come up much have any other questions please let me know